Hello, my name is Fred David. I'm a professor of management at Francis Marion University in Florence, South Carolina, and am co-author of this strategic management textbook published by Prentice Hall. Co-author and I have developed a series of short five-minute videos to highlight how to perform various matrices and analyses described in the textbook. The segment today is on EPS EBIT analysis covered in chapter eight. So why, what is EPS EBIT analysis and why is it an important strategic management topic? Well, it's a financial management tool that reveals whether debt, equity, or some combination of debt versus equity would be best in terms of financing. And it makes the, the decision or suggest, recommendation based on earnings per share. For students, this topic is vitally important because typically students or teams of students are asked to develop a strategic plan with a set of recommendations and to give estimates on the cost of those recommendations that could add up to, to $1 billion or some amount of money. So the question becomes, how best should the firm obtain that, that money through debt, equity, or, some, or some, com, some combination? And for a business, managing debt, the debt equity situation, can you great competitive advantages? I mean, too much debt is not a good thing, but too little debt may also not be a good thing. If you could get debt at 3%, if your return on investment is 12 to 14%, perhaps you want more debt. Same, same kind of thing with equity. Too, too much equity can dilute ownership of the firm. Uh, too little equity could, could slow growth or, or inhibit growth. So there's a right way to manage the debt versus equity situation in a business, and EPS EBIT is a primary financial tool used to manage that situation. It's described in, in Chapter 8 there. So how do you do EPS EBIT analysis. Well, for starters, you anticipate a low and a high range for EBIT, that's earnings before interest and tax. And you're going to want to subtract off interest to get earnings, earnings before tax, subtract off tax, get earnings after tax, calculate the number of shares, and then lastly calculate the earnings per share. So you're going to be calculating the earnings per share for a scenario where the firm will be using debt versus all stock versus some combination, let's say 50-50, 50 debt, 50 stock, to finance the, these recommended suggestions. There are some limitations to EBS, EBIT analysis. For example, the analysis in and of itself doesn't reveal whether or not the firm is already too highly leveraged. It doesn't really reveal whether the firm, whether dilution of ownership is already a problem. So there, this analysis, like all analytical tools, has some limitations, but, but it's still going to be vital to use this because EPS is arguably the most important financial variable for measuring performance, particularly in a publicly held firm, probably more important than ROI, return on investment, or, or even profit margin. So in conclusion, no, no company would go bankrupt by having too little debt. It's generally going to be because too much debt. And the debt to equity situation is something that needs to be managed effectively. It, it is a strategic issue of vital importance in implementing strategies. It's covered in Chapter 8. There's a need even to graph the top row, that's the EBIT row, with the EPS to see at what point debt versus equity becomes more attractive in, in financing the recommendations for the firm going forward. So thank you for studying Chapter 8, these analytical tools there, particularly the finance ones in terms of value of a company, how much is a company worth, and on the, the, the topic of this segment, EPS EBIT analysis. It's good to see you today. Join back soon. We're going to look at another segment here, probably on how much is a business worth, and go with that. Thank you for being here.